Crifton Vale have only picked up five points all season. Minus 21 goal difference. They are ripe for the pick-in. Which normally means there's going to be an upset in this game. What's going on guys? My name is Adam. I am a super swan. I welcome to Club 2, Episode 3 of the FM20 Campus to Champions Challenge. You come back 10 games into the Danks Bank Premiership in Northern Ireland and we're doing pretty alright. We are in 4th place in the league and there's only about 5 points separating 5th place Limfield from 1st place Coleraine. So it's all very tight at the top of the moment but we are still early days in the season. So that's where we are at the moment. 10 games played, 5 wins, 3 draws, but only 2 defeats. And we've been doing pretty well since you last left us. We had that disappointing draw which we showed on camera last episode. And we went unbeaten for the longest time. We beat Cliftonville, Newry City. Did pick up a couple of draws at home against Crusaders and Linfield, which was a bit disappointing. Beat Anag United in the Cup. Came back to beat Carrick Rangers, beat Queen's University, Belfast, beat Glenarvan. And then the wheels started to slip off a bit. We did lose to Coleraine 3-1. Did bounce back against Duggan Swifts. Doug Duggan? Duggan. Duggan Swifts. We did loop, beat them 2-1. But then we have lost to the early favourites, Larn. The one that has like 10 times the budget to everybody else. We did have a very narrow defeat against them, but we do come back today for two games. One against Balamena United and the second against bottom of the league, Cliftonville. So fingers crossed we can build on our decent start. I'm happy you're fourth. As long as we get top six, I think the board will be happy. So that's the, the lay of the land since you last left us. And as far as players go, our sort of 60-year-old striker, Glenn Green, has been absolutely amazing. Four stars he's up to now. He's improving rapidly. Five-star potential. The problem is, is that he doesn't want to sign a contract. So if I can offer him a new contract, he's not interested. He's like, nah, I'm extremely uninterested in discussing terms. And what's even worse, he's wanted by Lan. So... This is TNS all over again. Uh, this, well, this is Swansea Uni all over again with TNS stealing our players. So I have a very funny feeling that Glenn Green will not be with us after January, but we will wait and see. So we'll have a look at who we're playing today. Balamena United, and this is the lineup for that game. We've got Neeson in goal, Thompson, Rooney, Lewis, and McCann at the back. Banks and Price in the middle with Daniels, Chuck Woody and McDade in those attacking positions. And the 16-year-old Glenn Green starts up front. Nine goals from eight starts and three substitute appearances. So as I say, fourth place, we're doing all right. I'll take that. As long as we're in the top six by the split, I think that'll be a fairly successful campaign. So I'm going to give uh, We are the favourites here. Get the job done. Tell them I have faith in them. That normally, uh, that's normally enough to get them going. Only a few players seem to be up for it. But we are at home against Balamena United. They're in seventh place. Can we build on our fairly decent start to the season? As we start with McDade. Comes inside, finds Chuck Woody. Crosses it in for Daniels. And it's the first goal of the game. And it's Josh Daniels from the left-hand side. Grabbing the first goal for Glen Torren at home at the Oval. And we find ourselves 1-0 up early on in this game. McDade starts to move off. Finds Chuck Woody. It's across to Daniels. Loads of room in the top corner. And we are 1-0 up already. 12 minutes in. Thompson with a throw to Chuck Woody. Back to Thompson. Can he beat his man? He's trying to, but he can't quite. Gets the cross to Banks. Chuck Woody outside the box. Oh, it's over the bar. Off the crossbar. Unlucky. 31 minutes in. It's a goal kick. Pumped up field to McDade. He's got some room here. Can he come inside? No, he loses the ball. And Balamena United. Only have had two shots all game. We've been the better side. We've had the possession. We've had the shots. As Bill Lewis tried to find Price, but he doesn't quite get there. But Price again with a tackle. He's just tackling everyone. Tom Price, the man we brought with us from Swansea Uni. But McDade 
Back to Tom Price. He's involved a lot in this game. Tries to find a long ball to Glenn Green. Picks it up. Daniels is there. Glenn Green in the box. Oh, he counts Daniels. Oh, unlucky boy. He's almost got a second goal. Free kick. Chuck Woody crosses it in. Anybody at the back post? Nobody there. But McDade takes it down. Finds Chuck Woody again. We're going to recycle. Start the move off again. That's just a long ball in the box. Headed away. But Glenn Green's going to pick it up. Banks, back to McDade, can he get make some room, tries to find a pass, but it is deflected, but McCann's going to re-pick that up from right back, clear away, not quite sure where the highlight is here, but Daniel's in the box, can he find Glenn Green, he can, that's a foul, that's going to be a penalty, and the referee is going to give us a chance to go 2-0 up here, yeah. and it's going to be, I think, McDade taking it, Takes a shot, he puts it in the back of the net. And Glenn Torren are now 2 0 up against Ballamena United. As Robbie McDade, our best striker at the club before Glenn Green was discovered. And I think if Glenn Green does go in January, McDade will be going back up front. As we do find ourselves 2 0 up going into half time. Fairly decent performance so far. We've shown our dominance, we've converted our chances into goals. And I just hope we don't have a second half collapse and make sure we hang on to all three points as we will still be in fourth place the way things stand, but we'll be only four points off the top as Glenn Green's found himself in the box, but it's saved by the goalkeeper. Unlucky from the 16-year-old, he is on form, which is why Lahn are interested in him as Daniels crosses it in. Cleared away as far as Rooney. Price, it's been everywhere today. Cleared away by Balamani United, though. And we will go, hopefully, into half-time. A lot going on in that first half. There's not going to be much I'm going to be able to cut out from that half. But I'm going to praise the team. I'm going to give a passion up. Very happy with the way things are going. As far as tactics go, Glenn Green is on 74%. So I think I'm going to put McDade up front. And maybe bring on... Who can I move out there? Josh Daniels can swap flanks. And we'll bring Tom Bain on the left to give our 16-year-old a bit of a rest as he is on 74%. So slightly mixing things up. Are we going to have an action-packed second half? It does look like we are as Daniels intercepts. He's got some players in front of him. He's always going to go on his own. He's going on his own and it's saved. Should have passed it. 57 minutes, goal kick. And it's going to be Rice from Balamena United. All the highlights have been from Glentor and I don't remember seeing a a Balamena highlight as we do get one. First decent chance. And Neeson does get the save. Oh, is there a second chance? They did have one off the crossbar, which Neeson did save. So, you know, we can't count them out. As Balamena crosses it in the box from the corner. Whiteside back to O'Neill. Crosses it in. But Bill Lewis, the eight foot seven monster at the back, gets rid of the ball. 63 minutes. Another highlight in the second half. Kane for Balamena United. They've done a little bit better in the second half. They seem to be having a lot more of the ball in the second half. We just need to guard against complacency a bit here. And just don't do anything stupid to concede some goals. As tries to find Chuck Woody. It's a poor ball. And O'Neill plays it into Freel. One-on-one. -on -one and Neeson again stands tall. Neeson doing very well in goal. He's only two-star current ability. But O'Neill... Is doing very well. Neeson, sorry, I should say. He's doing very well as it goes out for a goal kick. 71 minutes. Bill Lewis is looking a bit tired. He's on 7.2. So we'll give him a rest. We'll bring Mark Hawhey on for him. And is there anybody else we can bring off? Tom Bain on 6.5. He's not done very well since he's come on. But I think I will dial Chuck Woody back to support in the meantime. But another sub made. About 20 minutes to go. It's a free kick, I think, for Glenn Torren here. Yep, yeah, we got a free kick. 77 minutes in. Chuck Woody from the free kick. Oh, it's in the goal. John Chuck Woody's made it 3-0 from the free kick. And that will seal all three points for Glenn Tora. And it's a stunning free kick. Goalie gets a hand on to it, but it wasn't enough. And Glenn Tora a 3-0 up. A very long kickoff highlight here, which make, fills me with dread. As Freel's through, he's gone over the top, one-on-one. -on -one, but he puts it wide of the goal. Let off for Glentoran. 
as we get another highlight. Oh, it's all kicking off. It's every time the ball goes out, there's a highlight in this game. I don't think I've come across a game so far in FM20 that's as many highlights in this game as Balamed United do grab a goal back. It is 3-1. And I think I must have watched about 20 highlights in this game. So uh, I'm going to have to try my best to condense it down so we can have a, a respectable amount of length of time in this episode. But Nisa makes the save, but they do grab a goal. They do make it 3-1. But with 10 minutes to go, I think it's too little too late. Coming up to full time, a very busy game. A lot of highlights. But we do get the win. It's a 3-1 win for Glen Toran. I can say I'm very happy with the way you played. And that will keep us in that fourth place position. So we're not going to move too far up the league. But it does keep making sure that we are in those top six places. Because I would say that's the goal for this season. Get in the top six so we can be in that championship playoff once the split happens. All the usual suspects did pick up wins as well. But if we look at the news articles here, Daniel's on form. We'll praise him. You are superb. If we look at the competitions, that will keep us in fourth place. Linfield only a point behind us. Crusaders in sixth, only three points behind us as well. But there is a gap between sixth and seventh. There's a seven-point gap there, so we are in very good stead to be in the top six. But we will now go to our next game against bottom of the table, Cliftonville. A team that did interview me whilst I was at Swansea Uni. So it's going to be nice to get some revenge on a team that didn't think I was good enough last season. And we'll show them why we are in charge of Glen Torren. We've rotated some players for the Cliftonville game. So the lineup's going to be as follows. We've got Neeson starting goal. Thompson, McLean, Hohe and McCann at the back. Chris Gallagher comes in as the box-to-box -box with Price staying as that ball winner midfielder. A lot of change on the wings. We've got Byrne coming on the left. Chug Woody keeps his place. Fraser comes in on the right, and Glenn Green is going to start up front for us. As they are looking to play, it's a bit tired, like Josh Daniels looking a bit tired. McDay drops to the bench, Sean Banks drops to the bench. So we need to make sure we keep the players fit. But Cliftonville are bottom of the league, so I am hoping we don't need to rotate that much to get a result away from home. But let's have a look. So who have they got on their team? Nobody I recognise, but we are going to tell them that I want them to pick up where they left off. They do seem motivated. I can tell them they have what it takes to get the job done. They are motivated by that. Cliftonville have only picked up five points all season. Minus 21 goal difference. They are ripe for the picking. Which normally means there's going to be an upset in this game. 21 minutes. First highlight of the game. And it's Thompson from the goal kick for Cliftonville. Tries to find his brother Thompson. They've both got the same name. But Mark Thompson to Gormley in the box, and it's 1-0, and Gormley has scored for Cliftonville. I'm looking at the stats, they've had two shots, one shot on target. We've had six shots, two on target, and it is Cliftonville, the team bottom of the league, that have taken the lead. Cushley plays it into Thompson, he split the defence, first time shot, it's in the back of the net. And I just knew there was going to be an upset on the cards here, as we do find ourselves 1-0 down. Free kick from Hohe, 25 minutes. We need to find a way back into this game fairly quickly. Otherwise, we're going to run the risk of what happened against Warren Point Down. As Burn tries to come inside, but he's tackled very easily. And now Cliftonville on the counter. Thompson. There's like five Thompsons on the pitch. But Glenn Green picks the ball up. Finds Frazier. There's a lot of Glen Torren players upfield. We need to find one of them as Gallagher to Burn to Glenn Green. Byrne with a shot, it's Tom Byrne with a shot. And he's put it in the corner to make it 1-1. We are back in the game. And Tom Byrne, third goal of the season, comes in off the bench from the last game. He starts today and he's showing us why we've got a lot of depth on those wings. We've got a lot of good players. First time shot. Goalie could have done a bit more, but it's 1-1. Back in the game. Come up to half-time, fairly quiet game compared to the last one. Not many highlights, only the goals to speak of. But we are doing pretty all right. I mean, we are, you know, I would say the better side. So I am going to say a bit of an assertive, you know... I'm going to say there's an opportunity to show the pundits why you're doing well. And I'm going to say I know you're capable... And the team look to be motivated. There we go. They're all happy. They're all motivated. They're going to go out for the second half. 
We're going to go attacking. We're going to try and find the winning goal. As Byrne, the goal scorer, finds Thompson on the left for us. One of the five Thompson brothers on the pitch at the moment. Finds Gallagher. He's going to hopefully play that inside of Chuck Woody, and he does. Back out wide to Thompson. Is he going to cross this in? No. Goes short to Gallagher. One, twos between them. Thompson tries to cross it. No. Intercepted. Finds the goal scorer, Byrne. Fraser at the back post. And there it is. Johnny Fraser. I'm going to put it back to positive now. Johnny Fraser with the goal. It's his first goal of the season. And we do finally take the lead against Cliftonville. A bit of short pass in between Gallagher and Thompson on the wing there. But Fraser with a header. Goalie didn't stand a chance. And again, Torin are 2-1 up. 56 minutes, Fraser. Long ball in the box for Hohe. It's Hohe with the goal. I think that's how you pronounce it. Mark Hoagie, maybe? Hoagie, Hoagie? Hoagie. There's a G in it. Hoagie with the goal. It's 3-1, and that should be enough for us to get all three points today. Fraser from the centre-back. It's a lovely header. And after a bit of a shaky start, we do find ourselves 3-1 up. 64 minutes. I've just praised the team. Is that going to make a difference? As Glenn Green's going to pick it up. Bit of a quiet episode from him today. Hasn't scored any goals yet. But Gallagher with a shot. Puts it wide of the goal. 72 minutes. I think we should make some subs. McCann's struggling out there. So we'll bring on Bernie for him to play on the wing. Thompson's also looking a bit tired. So Marcus Kane can come on there. And I think I am going to bring off John Chuckwoody to bring on Robbie McDade. We'll go two strikers. We'll make McDade... We'll make him a deep line forward. We'll keep Green as the pressing forward. So two strikers... 12, well, 15 minutes to go. We should see this for the win. Free kick from Fraser. 78 minutes. Is there a fourth goal that's for us? Hoagie again. Almost got a second goal and identical to the goal we scored. 84 minutes. Five minutes to go in this game. We have dominated. We've had 25 shots. 10 on target. Clifton Villa have only had five shots all game. So we seem to be having a lot of the shots. So we have shown some dominance here against bottom of the table. Clifton Villa. And it's 3-1 at the moment. But, like I say, five minutes to go. Anything can happen. Cushley's through. Puts it wide. Clifton Villa been very unlucky today. 87 minutes. The game's not over. As it passes it back to the goalie. Is there one last twist in this tale between Clifton Villa and Glentoran? As McGeegan on the ball finds Glacken on the right-hand side. There's an overlap at right back, but he decides to go inside instead. Doherty finds Cushley. Cliftonville, nice bit of play here from them. Gormley with a shot, though. Not enough, though. Not enough. Free kick from Burnie. 88 minutes. Green with a header. And he's offside. Unlucky from the 16-year-old. Almost got on the score sheet. But he was just a fraction offside. Let's have a look here. Yeah, yeah, he looks a bit... Well, we can't see him, but the line show, he was definitely offside. Still only 3-1 as we go into full time. We do have a last-minute highlight, though. As Teague takes it down. Got about a minute to go. As Gallagher pumps it upfield to McGeegan. They've thrown everyone forward here, Cliftonville. Not quite sure why. They do need two goals. As Glenn Green's one-on-one -on -one here. The 16-year-old rounds the keeper. And he's made it 4-1. The 16-year-old does get on the score sheet. And uh, I don't think he'll be with us in January. I just have a hunch he will not be with us in January. But it all starts. I think they threw everyone forward and we just struck them on the counter. Glenn Green, he's one-on-one, -on -one, rounds the keeper. And it's an easy goal for him to get on the score sheet. 4-1 the score. And that will get us two wins out of two in today's episode. And the game's not over yet. We're still having highlights as McDay now. He's one-on-one. -on -one, puts it over. I think Clifton Villa have been a bit too attacking at the moment. We are exploiting their, uh, their defence at the back. As there's a corner from Fraser, over the bar. It's got to be full-time now, surely. There can't be much left in this game. And there is the full-time whistle. 4-1 win. We did concede first, but a fairly straightforward win. I'm going to give a passionate well done to the side. And let's have a look and see what that does for the league table. So quality possession provides victory. Fraser was on form. We'll say he was superb in front of goal. 
And looking at that league table, we've moved up to third place in the league now. But as you can see, there's only three points separating fifth place Linfield from first place Glenarvan at the top of the league. So the top five teams are all very close together. But it doesn't really matter until the split happens. But as long as we're in that race, we're in that conversation, I would say we're doing pretty well. I'm happy with where we are at the moment. So I think what we'll do is we will come back... I will say um, beginning of December, I think. Well, where are we now? End of September. So, yeah, because we've got the winter break because I think the 2022 World Cup's happening. So, there's a bit of a gap between games. So, I think what we'll do is we'll come back. We might even come back for the last two games of the year. Actually, no, we've already played Warren Point Town at Cliftonville. So, we've already played them. I think we'll come back for Glenarvan and Linfield because we haven't shown Linfield off this season. So, we will come back at the start of November for those two games and then we'll probably come back then around about the end of the January window I would say or maybe even towards the end of that but we'll plan that all out later we'll, we'll, we'll decide when we come back it'll be somewhere around here anyway we might even come back for LAN I don't think we've shown off LAN yet in this save but so far about the th third of the way through the season a quarter of the way through we're doing all right we're in those top six places which is where we need to be and fingers crossed, coming into next episode, we can keep up the push. But leave a like if you enjoyed, guys. Subscribe to the channel for more Football Manager 2020 content. We will be uploading Campus to Champions every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 6 p.m. GMT. And tune in next time for two more league games in the Danks Bank Premiership. Can we keep up the pace with the top six teams? Thank you very much for watching.